Now for this question, my first thought is arithmetize, right? I can tell this is a, a very quirky kind of fractions thing. I don't really want to have to solve this because I know I'm going to get common denominators, but there's three different denominators. And then there's the P on the other side, right? So there's a lot of algebra here that I, I just don't trust myself. I see some negatives. I, I see the fractions. I get nervous. So my thought would be to arithmetize. And, and I'll show you that. It, when I did it the first time with arithmetize, I got a little hung up on it. So I have some amendments to what I did the first time I saw this question. But I would still say, let's make our numbers as easy as possible, right? So if Q uh, and R and S are all one, then this thing really just becomes uh, 20 minus 20 minus 20, right? Because then we just don't have to deal with the fractions on the right side at all. Now with a P, I have to figure out what it could be. But 20 minus 20 minus 20 is negative 20. So 20 over P is equal to negative 20. Well, I could cross multiply and divide, but I can already see it. That only works if P equals negative one. So I've got numbers now for all my things, right? So I've got these three and I've got this one. It's a little different. So now I would just be like, okay, I need to get something equivalent to Q. So I need to get it equal to one. So let's just be careful, but let's plug in, right? So P we said is negative one plus R is one plus S is one. So negative one plus one is zero plus one is one. So that checks out. Let's keep going. B 20 and then P we said was negative one. R is one. S is one. So again, the negative one plus the one is zero. And then 20 times one is 20. So that doesn't work. So great, we're making progress. Choice C, this is where it gets a little annoying, right? So we have on the top, negative one times one times one over negative one times one plus negative one times one plus one times one. So it's getting a little messy because there's so many ones. And this is maybe where like, well, maybe I should have picked different numbers just so I had something easier uh, to, to separate them, maybe but then I would have had to be more careful about which numbers go where. I, I don't know. It's it's tricky. It's, it's, you know, it's hard. There's a lot of, there's four letters, right? It's a lot to keep track of no matter what method we choose. So this is going to be negative one on the top. Negative one times one is negative one. Negative one times one is negative one plus one, right? So we kind of end up with a negative one. The negative one and the one cancel. So it's negative one over one. This is also positive one. So this also works. And that does not surprise me. Often when I arithmetize, especially with zeros and ones, I end up with multiple answers that work. Now, normally that doesn't bother me because I'm like, well, it's usually very fast to use the number one or the number zero. I couldn't use zero here because it had to be positive. But I, I, here we've got a little bit of a problem in that, I don't know, that was a lot of work. And I, the, keeping track of those negatives is risky. So I might have gotten rid of the variables, but I still have a lot of tricky things here to, to worry about. So I don't know, this might be where I would be like, oh, maybe I made the wrong call. Well, let's try D, let's just see what we get. So we already know the top here is gonna be negative one, right, because we just did that. And then 20 times negative one, so 20 times negative one plus 20 times one plus 20 times one is negative 20 plus 20 plus 20. So the 20s, those negative and positive cancel, so we're left with negative one over 20. That's not one, so that's gone. So now we're down to two answers. And now normally my move would be to pick a new set of numbers. Um, but I did that on the real test and then I kept getting multiple answers working. And honestly, I know the SAT well enough that I kind of know at this point the answer is C. And, and I don't know that you can do that. I don't know that you have the experience to, to be confident like that. But I, I just know that choice A is way too easy. And we're at number 19 out of 22. This is clearly a question that involves moving a bunch of variables around with fractions. And so it's going to behave in ways that are very strange and kind of a pain in the neck. And C looks like the pain in the neck answer. That's, that's literally my logic here is I'm like, I think that A is probably some sort of trap. It's too clean for something that I know is probably going to be messy. So I would have picked that if I were smart, if I had been strategic about it on the real test, I would have picked C and kind of moved on and then later mark for review and, and come back. So let's try a couple different ways to do it. So um, let's see if we can, uh, first of all, just do the algebra, okay? That, that, that's maybe the first thing, right? So in order to, to do this algebra, we would, I guess, have to get common denominators because we're trying to get what? We're trying to get Q by itself. So there's a couple ways to do that. Um, but I think uh, maybe we start by moving the R and the S over. So we would get uh, 20 over P plus 20 over R plus 20 over S is equal to 20 over Q. 
So now we have to multiply everything by the common denominator, which is PRS over PRS, right? So that's everything here at least has to be multiplied by that. But we have to make sure we're eliminating things, right? So when we do this times the first term here, the P's will cancel. So we end up with, um, we end up, or I guess we're not really multiplying by PRS, we're just multiplying by whatever gets us PRS. So we're multiplying by RS for that first one. See, this is confusing. I don't like this method. Uh, 20 RS over P uh, RS plus 20 PS over PRS plus 20 PR over PRS equals 20 over Q. Now that these are all like terms, the same denominator, I can add them. So 20 RS plus 20 PS plus 20 PR over PRS is equal to 20 over Q. Now that we have these, these fractions, there's only two fractions anymore, right? There's only two fractions. If we had it originally, we couldn't just flip everything. We want to, but we can't. I don't think. If I'm wrong, comment. But I'm pretty sure we can't. So now we can, though. Now we can flip them because it's basically like a giant ratio. So I, I want to solve for Q. I want that Q on top. So I'm going to do it. So PRS over 20RS plus 20PS plus 20PR is equal to Q over 20. And now how do I get that? 20 out of there to get Q alone, I multiply by 20. And if I think about the bottom here, I could kind of pull that 20 out, right? So that's 20 times RS plus PS plus PQ, PR, oh my God, PR, the 20 cancels. So now we end up with Q is equal to PRS over RS plus PS plus PR. Is that even what we ended up with? PRS over PR, yeah, plus PS plus RS. So it's a little out of order from what they had, but you, you should be okay with the properties of addition that you're okay with moving those things on the bottom around. But that's it. That's the proof. Again, if there's some other way I'm missing, go for it. The only other thing I can think of, you know, let's, we could, we could go here. I don't love it, but we could, right? We could do uh, 20... Ooh, there we go, 20 over Q minus 20 over R minus 20 over S. Add sliders. Now in hindsight, let's just do something annoying or less annoying and just kind of make them one, two, three. That gives me that this piece here, which I want to move down, is 3.333. And that's supposed to be equal to 20 over P. So now I could solve for P. Maybe I play with this and, and make this three into a four or something and try to get a nicer number. Yeah, that's probably better. So that way now, oh my God, I really hate this so much. Uh, that way now I know that 20 over P is equal to five. So cross multiply 20 equals five P divide by five P is equal to four. So let's, <laughs> let's throw that in there. P is equal to Four. <laughs> now we got numbers for everything, so that works. Um, then we would want to get Q, which is still one. I don't know if this is going to work. So now we just take our P's, Q's, and R's and add them using the, the, the choices. So choice A, right, right, we would do P plus R plus S. That's 10. Remember we said Q is one, and we said that up here, not just because I did it before, but oop, all the way God, I hate this so much on Desmos. P is five. God, Desmos on the iPad, just driving me nuts. Ah, I can't even scroll. See, this is the problem with this method is there's too many things. And at least on an iPad, it's hard to move around. So there you go. Q is one. It's all the way at the top. That's what I'm trying to show you. So we have here uh, choice A, which is this, tells me that somehow... It's 11? I thought it was just 10. I don't even know what's going on anymore. I lost it. I lost it because there's too much scrolling. Oh my God, I can't even do anything. I can't even do it. Look at What's it even doing? <laughs> there we go. Q is 1. R is 2. That's 5. P is, what did I say? P is 5. P is 4. And S is 4. 
So there it is, 10. Oh my gosh. See, this is a mess. This is a great example of maybe arithmetize was not the right call because there's too many things. But I don't know. I don't have a good solution because that, that algebra down there in the green is not great either. So that's this is basically telling us P plus R plus S is not giving us the right value of Q. So let's just continue. And just for the sake of trying to understand what the heck is going on here, 20 times P, P plus R plus S, 200. That's not one. Choice C, which we know is the answer, is PRS divided by PR plus PS plus RS. Oh, it's one, thank God. So that works. That's proof now that we have the right thing, if anyone's still even watching this video because of how much of a disaster it is. And then there we go this, and that's 20P, P plus 20R plus 20S is 0.16. Is that the best method? Assuming you're on a computer and you have a mouse instead of the stupid iPad, because Desmos does not work when you want to touch things. And it's, notice, every time I try to touch something, it moved it. And it moved the sliders too. If I move those sliders and I start changing my numbers, now I don't even know what I'm looking for. So that would have driven me crazy if I tried that on the, on the practice test as well. But I don't know. I feel like it's just messy. And so maybe the, the biggest strategy here that applies to this question is, recognize the danger as soon as you see that initial equation and realize either you're going to have to do some annoying algebra that's going to take time and might take away time from questions that are easier later and maybe this is a worthy skip or you're just like well it's going to be tedious but i i know i'll get there eventually so it's worth my time i don't know but remember we have to have a sacrifice plan we have to have the thought about which questions are the are, are, are we going to target once we get past question 15, this hard module, you want to skip around and you want to pick things that you know, the strategies, you know, the, the methods, you know, the facts, whatever it is that you're going to get as many questions right in that time limit. So that might mean leaving this one aside or leaving it for last or guessing randomly entirely. But if you are going to guess, my advice, don't guess something that looks too easy, right? We know this is hard. So pick something kind of like C, maybe D. It just looks like a giant mess. You might be able to get this without actually doing any work and just thinking about how the SAT designs hard questions. Hopefully that was helpful. Sorry it was long.